In this video, we will get into texturing the house model we've been working on for the past few tutorials. If you haven't followed through the past 7 parts, you can just download the model from the link in the description below so you can follow up with this video. We are going to use some add-ons to make the texturing process fast and smooth without getting into too much details or complexity. If you are enjoying my content so far, consider clicking subscribe to follow up with my future video uploads. Hope you enjoyed this video, let's get started. The first thing that we'll need to do is to download and enable Blender Kit add-on. This add-on was previously available on Blender by default. Now you have to download the add-on separately from their website. So let's go to blenderkit.com. Once you get to the website, you can register for a free account from here if you want. If not, you can just download the add-on from here, then click this button to download the archive file, save it wherever you want, and then in Blender, Go to the Edit menu, then Preferences, and then from the Add-ons tab, press Install, and then go to where you downloaded the add-on, select it, and then press Install. Once you do that, it should appear in your list, or you can search for Blender Kit, and then enable it by clicking the checkbox right here. Once you do that, now you'll get a search bar at the top here. You will find several tabs right here. The first one will let you search for all kinds of models, and then from the second tab, you can search for materials. And from this one, you can search for entire scenes, this one for HDR, which we will be using in upcoming tutorials, and then some brushes for sculpting, making this add-on very useful and handy to use while you are working on your project. This add-on also allows you the opportunity to become a creator and upload your own models for the Blender community so that anybody can use it directly from inside Blender. I have uploaded some of the models that I have been making tutorials for if you search for my name on the search bar here raymond gabriel you can find all the models that i have uploaded so far and you can use most of them for free if you want to use the locked models that you may find you have to subscribe for the full membership on the blender kit website let us try to add one of my models to the scene quickly to check how it works i want to add this pendant lighting that i've created before simply go over here Hide the window, hide the frame, then drag the pendant model from here. Keep pressing your left key until you position the pendant here at the ceiling, and then release. This will download the model and get it in your scene. In the same way, we can add materials. So let's get into texturing. Instead of using the model tab here, go to the second tab, the material tab, and then we'll start texturing this structure over here that we have modeled before. Again, search for my name, Raymond Gabriel, and use one of the materials that I've pre-made. Just click and drag the material with your left mouse button. Do not release your left click. Just keep pressing your left click so that you can see the material like that. You'll find that there is a small line coming out of it. Point the end of the line on the model you want to apply the textures to, and then release your left click, and that will instantly download the material and apply it to the model. As you can see, it already applied it, but it's appearing as black. That is because we're still in the solid view. Just switch to the material preview by pressing Z. And now you can see the material on top of the model. Next, I want to adjust the way that the texture looks on top of my model. I do not like how it looks right now, as there is a visible repetitive pattern. And I want to fix that. So to be able to do that, I need to manipulate the unwrapping or the UV unwrapping of that mesh. To be able to do that, I will have to split the viewport into three viewports. Go to the corner right here with your mouse, the upper right corner, until you see a white cross like that. Press your left mouse button and then drag to the left like that to split the viewport into two. And then on the right viewport here, put your mouse again at the top left corner. Make sure that you are not on the black part, but slightly inside the viewport you want to split. Make sure that you have the mouse in the correct place and then press the left mouse button, drag it down so that you split this one into two again. Now that we have three viewports, I want to switch the type of each viewport to use them differently. I will go here from this menu, switch this one to UV editor, and then this one I'll switch to shader editor. All right, so these are the texture nodes that this texture is using. It is already pre-done and set, as this is an already-made texture. 
I will get into explaining each one of those nodes briefly so that you understand what they are doing. And then later in the upcoming tutorial, I will be creating a material from scratch so that you know how to create one for yourself and don't have to depend on the add-on. But for now, let's just use the add-on as it's very efficient and easy to use. So let's get into modifying the texture on the model. As I said, I want to change how the texture looks on top of my model. Press tab to go to edit mode. And then from over here in the UV editor viewport that we have opened, you can see your UV unwrap. Just scroll out to zoom and see your unwrap of the model. The meaning of unwrap is the flattening of a 3D mesh on a 2D plane. Imagine a box that you have cut and flattened on a table. Let's create a box quickly. So this is how the unwrap of a box looks like. And this is the unwrap for this mesh. The way that you flatten or unwrap the model's UV is by pressing U on your keyboard here in the 3D viewport, and then you will be presented by the UV mapping menu. Then you have several options to do the unwrapping for the model. For now, I'll just use the cube projection. Let's see what happens. Select cube projection. Now you'll see that the unwrapping changed in the UV editor. And now also the texture looks quite different. I can press A on my keyboard while hovering over in the UV editor viewport and then press G to move it. You will see that this moves the texture on top of the mesh. But as you can see, the texture is still too large for this mesh. I want to make it smaller in scale. So I have two options. To do that, I can either scale the unwrap like that, and that will make the texture smaller on my mesh, or I can manipulate some of the values here in the shader editor viewport. I prefer the second option, as this will leave the unwrap as is, which will be more efficient. What we have here in the shader editor is a bunch of nodes that are going to the material output in the end, which gives you the final look of your texture that you see on your model. If you cannot see the nodes, you are probably zoomed out or the nodes are not in the middle of the viewport. Just press A to select all and then press the pre key on your numpad to adjust the view. If you do not have a numpad, go to view and choose frame selected. The first node that you'll find is the principal BSDF, and this is the main node to create the material. In order to give that material its base color, you'll find that it's connected to an image texture. This is simply an image stored in this node, and this image is being used as the base color for the material. So you'll find that it's already connected to the base color input in the principal BSDF node. Another image right here is being used as the normal which manipulates the way light reacts with this texture, giving the illusion of it being bumpy or rough. Then you'll find that it's connected to the normal map here, and then connected to the normal input in the principal BSDF node. And over here, all the textures are connected to the mapping node. I can manipulate the scale of the texture easily by going to the scale values here. I will press my left mouse key and then drag down like that, so I can select X, Y, and Z together. Now I can change the value from one to four, and then press enter. You'll see that this has made the texture look better on the model. But for this specific texture, I do not want it to look like concrete. I want to make it look more like a brushed metal. To do that, I will have to remove the normal map image texture so it appears smooth. So go to the normal map, which is connected to the normal input right here. I can press control, keep pressing it. And then with the right mouse button, you can click and drag so that you make a cut here to this connection. And that will remove the connection. Or you can just simply click the connection from the input right here and then move it away to disconnect. Now that I have removed the pumpy look and the texture, it is starting to get the metal look that I want. But it's still not shiny enough to look like metal. So go over here and change the metallic value in the principal BSDF node from 0 to 1. And to increase the shininess even more, change the roughness value over here to 0 0.3. Now I want to make the color a little darker than it is. The easiest way to manipulate the color is by adding an RGB curve node over here. In the shader editor viewport, press Shift A and then from color, choose RGB curves. Now that you have this node, Make sure to put it in the middle of the connection between the image texture here and the base color input right here. Press your left mouse button 
and that will connect the RGB curve in between them. Now, from this curve, click on the middle of the slope and drag it a little bit downwards, like that, and that will make the color more darker. I think that's good enough. Let's add a little detail to the mesh modeling. I want to add like a little bit of extrusion all around the top here. I will press Ctrl R to add the loop all around the model. Press once on your left mouse key. Drag it up around the top here. Click once to confirm the position. Press three for face select. Press Alt and keep holding it. And then click on one of the vertical segments right here. That should select the whole loop of faces like that. And now to extrude in all directions at the same time, press Alt E to get the extrude menu and then select extrude faces along normals. And that will extrude the whole loop of faces out like that. Okay, that looks good. Now what I want to add is some grouts or tiling. So it appears as if it's like metal cladding instead of just one piece of material like that. I can do that using the model itself by adding more segments using Ctrl R and then extruding the faces inside. But this will take very long time and will be a hassle. There is another way to do it using textures. You remember the normal map that we have removed before? I will add another type of normal map called a pump map to the texture, which uses grayscaled images to create pump on your texture. What I'll do is I'll use this image texture to make the tiling of the middle cladding. You can see that it's just a white image with simple black lines. The pump map will use those black lines to create them on the texture. Go to the shader editor, make room in this place, as we will be adding a few nodes here. Go to where you have the texture, drag it, and drop it in the shader editor right here. You'll find that this has added an image texture node, just like this one, with the image inside of it. To use that image texture, I need to connect it to the normal map input here in the principal BSDF node. I will not be able to connect it directly like that, as it will do nothing if I did that. But first, I need to add a pump node. Press Shift A to add a new node, and then from Vector, add the pump node right here, and then connect the color output of the image texture to it. Click and drag, and then connect it to the height input of the pump node right here. And then take the normal output from the pump node and connect it to the normal input of the principal BSDF node. Now we should see some lines starting to appear on the texture. To adjust the size of it, just like I did with the base color image texture, I can adjust the mapping node values over here. I can use the same mapping node and connect the output right here and connect it to the new image texture. But instead of doing that, because I do not want to change these values as it's already adjusted for these textures. So what I'll do is I will add a new mapping node for this one. If you want to add them quickly, you can use an add-on called Node Wrangler. We can enable the add-on from the add-ons tab. Go to Edit and then Preferences. And then from the add-ons tab, search here for Node Wrangler. This is an add-on that comes with Blender by default. So you just need to enable it by clicking this check mark and then save preferences. Now you can easily just press Ctrl T while you are selecting this image texture node. When you do that, it will add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node immediately connected to this one. You can add the nodes manually, but using the node Wrangler makes it a lot easier and faster. So now I can adjust the scale values here in the new mapping node and then change the x, y, z values to 3.4, which is the best value I found for it. And now I can go to the UV editor here, move the UV unwrap a little bit on the Y axis by pressing A to select all, and then G to move, and then Y. Now I can move it so that the gaps right here becomes at the start and the ending of this part of the model, like that. Now that I have it in the correct position, I also want to check if the X position is also correct. Maybe we can move it a little on the X axis as well, like that. I think this is good enough. Now we have the metal cladding material for this part of the model. Okay, let's move on to the platform right here. This platform will be divided into two materials. 
wooden material for the top of the platform itself and then the height here will be a different material so first i want to separate between those two materials on the model itself i will have to go to the material tab here and then press the new button now i have the first material added here you can see that it added a principal bsdf node by default to it and then to add a second material to that specific part of the model click the plus sign here so now you have an empty slot click the empty slot and then press new again now i have two materials for this piece of mesh i want to designate where this material should actually be on the model first let's rename the materials double click this one and name it to wood and then the other one i'll just name it paint by default the whole mesh now has the first material created applied to it which is in this case the wood material so if you change the base color here you'll find that the whole thing is changing color make sure that you are in material preview so that you can see the colors for the paint material i will make it black like this you cannot see any black now on the mesh yet as it is still not assigned to any of the faces i want all the parts which are at the side here to have the black paint material i can press 3 for face select press shift and keep selecting all these faces that i want to assign the black material to but this will take too long the easiest way i found to select these faces that i want to add the paint to is by selecting the top faces first make sure that you are in object mode press shift h to isolate the mesh press tab to go to edit mode press 1 for vertex select then press z and go to wireframe press b for box select and then select these four vertices of every step now let's go to the three steps i have at the back of the house and then do the same thing you'll see that it's selected also the faces in between the vertices i will press 3 for face select go to solid view and now press shift and start selecting the top faces of the stairs and of the platform itself like that now that i selected all the parts that should be the wooden material i can invert the selection and select all the other parts that will have the paint material so press Control i and that will invert the selection go to the material preview so you can see what you're doing the second material is still not assigned to any of the mesh so while you're selecting these faces i can select the second material and then press the assign button here and once you click that you will find that the black paint is now on top of all the faces that you have selected now that we have divided between the two materials i can now start making my wooden material for this one i will just use another ready-made wooden material from blender kit add-on let's search for wood i have already found a good material for that try to search for this one a wood material done by james middleton drag it and then drop it on the white material here and now you'll see that this has replaced the white material that we had before Press tab to go to edit mode. Press A to select all the faces. Now press U and then select cube projection to unwrap this mesh. Again, I want to change the scale of that texture. Go to the shader editor and in the mapping node, change the scale of X, Y, Z to five. Okay, also let us make the color a bit darker. So press shift A and from color, add in the RGB curve and put it right here just before the base color input make the middle of the slope and move it downwards a little like that until you have a darker color like that the last thing that i want to do for this tutorial is to also add the wood material to that piece of mesh as well to do that i will just attach it to the platform that i have already textured make sure to select this mesh first and then press shift and then select the platform mesh now press Ctrl J and that will join them both together, making them one piece of mesh with the same materials. But you'll see that this top face still doesn't have the wood material. 
That is because it is still not unwrapped correctly with the rest of the mesh. So press tab to go to edit mode, press A to select all of it, press U and again select cube projection. Now we'll see that the wood material is now applied to this mesh as well. On the sides here, it also has the wood material. You can press 3 for face select, then press shift to select all the faces on the side and assign the black material. This won't matter much as I will change these faces materials again in the next tutorial to match it with these walls materials. With this, the first part of the texturing phase is complete. Thank you so much for following up with the video to this point. If you enjoy watching my content, consider clicking subscribe to keep up with the upcoming tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.